You guys good? Good? Okay, great. Mike Dana didn't practice uh, with a calf. Clyde is sick. Uh, Jody shoulder, Sneed didn't work uh, just because of his knee. Drew Tranquil, neck. And then Isaiah Moore, Tony, and Wharton are the same as they have been. And then Nazi Johnson hurt his knee. So that's what we got. Hey everybody, go ahead, fire away. I got no introduction here. Go ahead. It's been going great. I mean, it's carryover really from OTAs. I thought we had outstanding OTAs in, in mini camp there. And then, uh, you know, they, they came in with the, with a purpose and they're, they're working hard. I mean, started with the rookies now, vets here and, and the guys are just flying around and, and it's good to see that they're hungry to get another one. I feel better than I did last last year. I had a bunch of young. We knew it was going to be a big turnover last year, so I knew we had a bunch of young players that needed experience, and we knew it was going to take some time. Now we got a lot of those guys are coming back, experienced, second year guys, confidence level, all that stuff is going to really help us. I think going forward, I feel good where we're at right now at this point. Yeah, it's, it's difficult to see anybody go down. You know, uh, we got to wait and see, you know, see what happens. Uh, you know, it's unfortunate that that happened, really. What's your depth like there? Uh, corner is good. You know, we're good there. Uh, you know, he is my starting gunner. Yeah, that's what I mean. So, uh, you know, we have to, you know, there's other guys that can do it, obviously. And, you know, he, he really came on last year at the end of the year and was ended up being one of my better players. So, I mean, it would be a blow, you know, to lose him. Um, but, you know, we just have to see, hope for, hope for the best right now. Yeah, you talked about him and Jack. How yeah. many rookies have, or what rookies have you seen? New rookies. Uh, the guy, the first guy that stands out in my mind is uh, Daneric Prince. You know, the returner, number 34, running back. Um, he's, uh, I think he's a special talent uh, as a returner. He didn't do it a lot in college, but I tell you what, he's, he's got a lot of skills. I'm excited to see him in a preseason game once, once we get going. He's looked really good in practice. Um, Connor has looked good, number 27, the safety. Uh, I got him starting right now on a couple phases already, you know, so he's on the accelerated program, uh, so to speak. So, um, you know, we're anticipating him being a guy for us. Uh, Nick Jones, another another young rookie uh, that I have on at least one phase right now. So, uh, you know, we got we will have there's always young players that play on special teams. That's just the way it is. But last year we had an abundance of them. And a lot of those guys are back. You know, the guys you talked about, Jack Cochran and Leo, Leo Chanel and all those guys that will be four phase players for us now. And then Excuse me? Yeah, yeah. He's, um, he's, he's probably right now the front runner, right, for the job. Uh, he's the guy that we're starting. You saw in the punt return. Um, he does a good job catching. He, he catches everything, which is good. Uh, you know, he's an experienced guy that did it at the Giants. Um, he's got a lot of uh, reps under his belt. That helps a lot. And he, he's looked good so far. He's probably the leader in the pack right now. You know, but there's other guys, Smith Marset. He's doing well, and, and, and Nico, you know, is doing really well, Remigio. So, you know, we're, we're excited, and we still got Sky, and we got uh, Justin Watson, too, that, that can also do it, you know, when we need, need guys to do it. He's got, a, he's got a chance as a returner. You know, he's going to he's gonna have to really show out as a returner, and he knows that. Um, that's, that's his skills right now. This offense is so tough. It's so hard to be a rookie coming in here and, and, you know, and, and trying to learn this offense and, and, you know, and get a good grasp of it to where you can be effective on the field. So he's in that mode right now. He's got he's to get better with the offense. But the first place he's going to make an impact is with me on special teams in preseason games. Is, is it an easy sell for, for rookies to, to know that the yeah, they, one way they might make this team is on special I tell you, teams? I tell you, there used to be, you know, when I first got in this league, you had to try to convince them to play special teams. Now, they, they understand it coming in. I mean, the colleges, they, they, they do a better job of uh, explaining it to them how important it is to play special teams in the NFL, and, and they come in with that, knowing that already. So a lot of them haven't played it, but once they get here, they're, they're, they accept it a lot quicker than they used to. Coach, just aside from special teams, with, with your old assistant head coach, just what's that like being with Andy for, for so long and just watch, watching him progress all these years? Oh, uh, man, Andy, you know, he's a Hall of Famer. I mean, no hands down. Um, it's been great being with him. I mean, I'm, hopefully it's, I'm, I'm with him for a long time going forward. But, 
Uh, you know, we've been together a long time. I think I've, I've coached with him longer than anybody on the, on the staff. I mean, we go all the way back to 1986, I think it was. So that's a long time ago. We were together at, on, the, on the UTEP staff. So, um, you know, it's, I've been with him a long time. Uh, we know each other well. We, we kind of share a brain a little bit, a lot of things, and, and, and I'm happy to be here. How much of a, how seamless is it to come inside when you, when you see the weather coming in? And our, our guys, they don't, you know, they don't flinch. You know, I mean, it, it happens real quick. They, they might have, some guys change their shoes, but they jump in here and we don't miss a beat. We just hit the ground running. They don't, nobody bitches. And I mean, it's, that's the beauty of our team. We've got great leadership, starting with Andy and then our, you know, our captains, you know, Pat and Kelsey, the two of the hardest working guys we got on the team. So, you know, it just filters down and we got a good thing going. You mentioned how long you've been with Andy. Is this like fun for him to come out here? And oh, he loves it. He loves it. I mean, he's, he's not going anywhere. You know, people keep talking about him. He's not going anywhere. He loves this. This is this is his this is his hobby. Like I I do other things. This is his, this is all he does is football. You know, I, I like to play golf. I like to fish. You know, I'm, I'm trying to get Andy to play golf. I'm trying to get him to go hunt. He just won't do it. He just strictly strictly fit. No, I hate the dorm life. I mean, I'm 61 years old, living in a concrete block room. You know, it's. Are you trying to talk him out of it? No, he's not going to change his ways. He's he's set in his ways, the way things are, you know, and it's, you, you can't knock it. I mean, it's success, so. Let's go a couple more. Harrison Bell through injuries, obviously, as well as last year, what they meant to the Yeah, he's, he's so, it's great to have him where he's at. I mean, obviously, he came back from the injury last year. You know, towards the end of the year, I think he was feeling a lot better. Now he's, it's way behind him. So, you know, the, the only problem is we got to go to Arizona again, so. But no, I think the field is fine now, so we'll be all right. Coach, uh, Chris Tabor, he's from St. Joseph. He's been inducted into the city sports hall of fame this month. You got to this month him. he was? Yeah, or this coming up. Oh, here, good uh, for him. Good yeah, for what, him. What are your memories of the work? Chris Tabor was my, you know, he was my assistant at Chicago. Yeah. And, you know, now he's the, you know, he's the uh, head he's the special teams coordinator at, at the Panthers. And he does a great job. One of the best in the league. I'm very proud of him, first of all. And, and what a great guy. Fun to be around. You know, it's funny, I'm out on practice and, you know, the Tabor family, hey, Tabor, it's Tabor's, Tobe, it's Tabor. I said, know who you are, you know, but it's, it's cool. He's a, he's a great guy and he's St. Joe, one of St. Joe's finest. Last one. Okay, thanks everybody. Last one. Thank you. All right. See you later. Ask away. Second camp, just, how's, how you feeling? How's, how's it feel just like camping? Uh, it's camp, you know. Um, obviously, it's a great opportunity to be be back here, you know, part of this team again to make another run for it. Um, but it's training camp, and it doesn't get any easier no matter what year you're in. Do you feel differently wearing that Super Bowl ring, this group? You guys accomplished a lot last year. What's the question? Do you feel differently? You guys, how does that make you feel? Nah, you. That's last year, man. We're on to a new year, man. We've got to reset and, and do it all over again. You know, so there's no difference. It's a great accomplishment that the last year's team had, but that team is nowhere near the same anymore. So got to go back to the drawing board and do it all over again. Marcus, what are you seeing from Sky so far? Uh, Sky's doing a great job, man. Um, you know, second year in, um, knowing the offense, being more comfortable and you know, who he is. They drafted him you know, in the second round for a reason. Um, he's super talented. Um, and having him you know, be able to move around and, and do some of the things that he can do, um, I'm, I'm excited to see what uh, the season holds for him. What type of advice are you giving guys like Justin Ross and Rasheed Rice just <coughs> as they're beginning their NFL careers, really, though Justin's been here at least last year? Yeah, I mean, those guys remind me a lot of myself, you know, as a rookie. Um, just their, their size and, you know, how they move, um, especially Justin Ross. Um, we're pretty much identical with, with the body type. Um, so, you know, that, that's one of those guys that, you know, I've kind of just taken under my wing. Uh, same with Ford. Um, but just – Tell them to be themselves. You know, they're here for a reason. They're talented. You know, don't let the moment get too big. Um, no pressure. Um, it's just football, something you've been doing your whole life. Quick wins. Uh, Patrick, what, what kind of a teacher is he on the background? Uh, man, he's a leader, man. You know, I, I wouldn't say he's a, he's a teacher. He's a leader. Um, and, you know, Coach Reed kind of does all the teaching, um, and he kind of just is the on-field voice for it. Um, and, you know, he's just a great leader, and, you know, he gets guys to do things a certain way. Um, he holds guys to a certain standard. And that's what we love to. And he's just a, a competitor. 
have you been more vocal? No, just at the secondary of your system. How have you been more vocal with the team? Um, you know, I'm a, I'm vocal in my my wideout room. You know, and obviously we got great leaders. You know, in every possession room. Um, you know, so I think it's about the same as what I was last year. Obviously, I was done in the offense last year, but you know, it was I was the oldest guy in the room. You know, and so now being two years into this system, I'm still the oldest guy in the room, um, and I can still you know teach this offense just as good as I know it. And um, you know, it's been good. Guys ask me questions. I can coach guys up. You know, I've been fortunate enough to be in this league for uh, some, quite some time. Um, had some great vets that kind of taught me some things, and then being able to go out and, and teach those guys and be in that role is uh, it's an honor. What things have you learned playing with Patrick from year one that you can better adjust to in year two? Um, I don't know. <laughs> it's not really like uh, something that I've, I've learned. You know, uh, like I said, I've, I've played with greats before, um, and it's one of those things where, you know, you just learn what he likes. And um, I think that's just the biggest thing for me is just, Doing the things that he likes to see, and then getting open and catching the ball for him. Do, do you How would think you describe a, what makes this offense so difficult to, to learn? Uh, I would say it's difficult to learn. Um, it's a lot of moving parts. They ask you to to do a lot. Um, you know, play all over, play all the positions. You know, and, and find space. But you know, we got a bunch of great leaders, and I think that you know having smart guys also helps. And so, does it have more moving parts than other? Offenses I don't know. I've only been in one of the offense, so I, I couldn't tell you what other offenses do. I know what I've been in, um, and it's about the same of you know when I was in Green Bay and, and to here. Just different terminology, but it's kind of all the same thing. Well, oldest player, oldest player year into the system. Do you feel a little extra responsibility? Nah, man. There's, there's no pressure. You know, obviously, I want, I want everyone to do well. I want everyone to make the team, especially in my room. Um, you know, so I'm just trying to hold those guys to a certain standard and. Um, you know, I know what Coach Reed likes. I know what Reach likes, and you know, and being able to get those guys to, to understand how to make this team, you know, is, is a responsibility that I, you know, take pride in. Uh, you know, whether it's you know, offensively or special teams, um, you know, I know what needs to be done to make this team. You know, so I have to go out there and coach a guy up on how to be a gunner, or go out there and teach him how to run a route. You know, I take both of those very serious. What would you say is the biggest lesson that you learned from older guys that you've been able to impart to the younger guys here? Um, you know, like I said, I, I had some great vets when I was uh, in Green Bay, um, from Devontae Adams to Randall Cobb, you know, to obviously Aaron. Um, being yourself, man, I think that's what this league is all about. Um, and I think that the more you can be yourself, that's what got you in the door. Um, and just learning how to be a pro, learning how to practice, you know, learning how to, to play the game the right way. Um, you know, I think that's something that you know isn't really taught um, until you get to the pros. All right, thanks, guys. Thank you. See you. First, first few days in Andy Reid camp, what, what's your first impression? I'm loving it, honestly. I uh, came in in great shape and uh, I knew what to do uh, to be prepared. So I'm um, just adjusting and uh, locking in and getting ready to go. Have you heard, did you hear much about Andy Reid's camp before? And did you come in with any, any pretenses? Yeah, I heard about it. I heard it was hard. Uh, one of the hardest in the NFL. So I knew just uh, on my little break to, to definitely get in shape. And I, that's what I did. I worked out every day and uh, just got ready to go. What's your impressions of working with? Uh, a lot of fun, honestly. Uh, you know, to play with great guys like that, great players, it's, it's very fun. And, uh, you know, I go out every day with a smile on my face, happy to go play football again. Very, very well. Um, you know, Trey's a, a great vet, um, you know, and having him next to me, you know, he brings that dominance and that nasty mentality, and I like that a lot. I like to, uh, you know, fancy my game after that. So uh, playing against next Trey has been very well. The communication has been good. With regard to just you know, picking everything up, what help has Patrick been as far as you know, helping you learn the offense and pick up some of the intricacies and details of that position? 
Oh, just a great leader, man. He brings that energy every day, and uh, you know he holds everybody accountable. Uh, if you mess up, we're gonna redo it. Uh, you know, and even in walkthroughs and the learning periods, we always just you know we slow it down and we get to get to learn offense. So that's been helping me a lot with the walkthroughs and you know learning the things they like down here. How's your dorm room? It's it's pretty cool. <laughs> it's, it's different, you know. Uh, but you know, I've been I've been just loving it. Uh, just love being here and trying something new. And uh, you know, I like I love it a lot. Room look like it's like cement or something. Uh, cement walls, yeah. Um, but I just got me a, a Renner Center bed, and you know, I just got my iPad in there, watch film. You know, it's not bad. Is, it, is the bed big enough for, for you? Yeah, it's a king. Yeah, it's a king bed. So I got me a mattress pad put on it. Uh, so it helped. You know, I've been sleeping pretty good in there. Did you had to get your own bed? Uh, no. Uh, well, you know, Renner Center. That's what we use here just to get our stuff. For uh, but I got me a you know a little mini fridge bed, stuff like that. So it comes with all that. Yeah, definitely. What do you think about the Food's pretty good, honestly. Um, I, I like the food a lot. I think they do a really good job here with the nutrition staff. Most importantly, has the weather helped you acclimate to Kansas City? Uh, yes, you know, I played here twice last year, uh, so I know what they expect. I know they get all four seasons here, so, uh, you know, I'm excited about that, uh, to try something new and, uh, you know, just be in a different climate for once. Has it at least been Florida-like since the beginning of camp? Yeah, been a little Florida like, just not as humid, a little more dry. So, you know, that's a little adjustment, but it's been pretty hot, not too bad. Do it. Well, I mean, we, we saw that big fishing video. You get, get any big ones this year? No, man. I went to the Keys. Uh, the first I went for two days. The first day I went, uh, just got like mahi, couple snapper, but nothing really big. And the second day we got rained out, so we had to come in. But uh, you know, it's all good. I'll go next off season. All right, thank yeah, you. thank y'all. Thank you. Pretty nice off season for you. You know, you, you went to that retreat. You had had you went back to your room and, and gave the speech. Just what's that been like, and just what's that experience been like this off season? Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. You know, when you have a, a kick that's pretty instrumental in, in winning the game. You know, obviously it wasn't the game winning kick, but when you have a kick like that, there are a lot of people that want to hear what you have to say, what you want to talk about. So to be able to be put on that platform, on that stage is very humbling. You know, I never thought I would be in this position to be an NFL kicker and then play in a Super Bowl, win two Super Bowls. So it's just a, you know, it's just a dream. And I almost have to pinch myself sometimes to tell, to tell myself that this is real, but just a blessing to have this platform and to be able to be here and have so much success you know, with this Kansas City Chiefs team. What, what, what is the thing that made you go to the retreat and, and what did you gain from it after that? Well, you know, football is very important in my life and I want to be the best I can, but there's also, you know, levels and there's things that are more important. So obviously I'm a husband, I'm a father, and then I'm a, I'm a Christian. So there's, there's things that I need to tap into and, and strengthen myself in. And I spend so much of the season, almost seven months with football, I like to try to take the off season as much as I can to get away and focus on those other things that are just as important, sometimes more important than playing football. How did the thing at Georgia Tech come about? President Cabrera, he, he called me and it was funny enough, I was doing a lot of different kind of Catholic, Christian podcasts and stuff and I was joking uh, the, the evening before he called me that I haven't had a lot of you know, secular media reach out and then that morning. I woke up and I had a, a voicemail from President Cabrera and I called him back and he wanted me to come be one of the, the, the speakers. I know there was probably three or four different um, commencement speakers, but when you get an opportunity like that, you can't say no to it. And, um, you know, I accepted and I'm, I'm so glad I did. It felt like a game day walking into Bobby Dodd Stadium, not a packed out stadium, but walking in there and then having to give a, a speech. And, you know, I'm not a public speaker, but I had to, to do my best there and, and get a speech written and deliver it. How long did it take you to write it? I want to say I didn't procrastinate, but, you know, it was probably a week before when I really finished it up. But, you know, it took maybe two weeks of just kind of getting stuff down and, it's funny, I didn't think that I would be trying to take stuff out. You know, they told me I had like six to nine minutes, so it couldn't be too long, and I tried to fit as much as I, I could in there. But, you know, it was, a, it was a great experience, and I'm, I'm super glad that I did it. Harrison, you kicked one way last year, and then you got the injury, and you switched it up. Where are you at now? Do you go back to the original way? Do you kick like you did at the end of last year? Can I just walk us through that? I think the way I'm kicking now more resembles how I was kicking after the injury. Okay. And I thought I finished up the season well. I felt good, felt consistent. And that's kind of how I'm kicking the ball now. And I think I'm kicking better this training camp than I even did last training camp before the injury. So I'm feeling really good 
uh, with it and the ball's going through and that's the most important thing. And I think I have probably changed some things in my technique where I'm not trying to, you know, oh, sorry. I'm not trying to destroy the ball. I'm just trying to make sure it goes through the uprights. And I think sometimes if you're swinging too hard, man, I'm really sorry about that. Some, no, that was me. Some of y'all might need some new cell phones after right this. Uh, but just focusing on making sure the ball's going through as consistent as possible. And I think if you're swinging super hard, it makes it hard to be um, consistent. So I feel like I'm in a good rhythm right now. I, I, I know last year the power was the big thing. So do you feel like this is more accuracy than power? You're sacrificing a little bit of that to, to make sure the accuracy is there? I'm sacrificing a little bit of the power, but at the same time, I have more power than I have had like in the past seasons, except for maybe last year. And I think the only difference there is I was just swinging a little bit harder last year but I still have enough distance for all my kicks. And I think all the days that I've kicked so far in training camp have been into the wind. So that, that's great practice. And I'm sure one of these days I'll get a, a practice where there's wind in my back and we can go past 55. It's been a, a good part of your offseason researching that type of stuff and, and new, new techniques and whatnot. So where, where did you find some of that new stuff that maybe you're implementing right now? Well, last season I met with a, a bio uh, mechanist, if that's how you say it. Um, and, and he helped me a lot with, with working on my plant foot, making sure that I wasn't bending my knee a ton on the plant so that I could get more power and talking to me about what pitchers do. And I didn't notice this, but a lot of pitchers, when they, if they're a right-handed pitcher, when they land on that, that left foot before they throw the ball, there's not a lot of knee bend. If anything, they're trying to keep that, that knee straight so they can get a lot of twerk in their hips. And I'd never thought about that, but so that was one thing I focused a, a ton on last off season. So because I spent all last off season doing that, this off season, I didn't really need to focus on that. The biggest thing was just making sure I'm consistent, the ankle's feeling good. I, I took more time off this off season from kicking just to make sure I had a, a good foundation, a good healthy foundation before I started to ramp things up. OTAs, I was kicking, I was kicking well. I wasn't kicking a ton, again, ramping it up. And now I'm in training camp, we're kicking a lot and the ankle feels great and I'm kicking well. How much more time off did you take? So last off season, I took the least amount of time off. You know, we've lost to the Bill or the, the Bengals on, you know, Saturday or Sunday. And I was kicking already on that Thursday. This off season, I took a whole month off from, from kicking, came back, just kicked once that week, and then started just once, twice a week, whereas in the past, I was kicking three times, sometimes four times, because I love to kick. You know, I love doing it, I love working on stuff, but I knew if I'm gonna have a good season this year, I need to make sure I'm fully healed up, I'm feeling good, my whole body, because one thing you don't realize is when you come to week one and you hurt your ankle, and then you're out for four or five weeks. I'm not able to do the same sprint work. I'm able to do the same heavy lifting, all of those things. So you're kind of starting, you know, week five, not as strong as you were. And so now your hips bothering you, your, your hip flexor, your groin, all these small muscles that normally you're fine with are, are bothering you because you lost so much of your base by getting uh, injured early on. So I really had to recover from a lot of different things. And now I'm feeling great. Did you ever feel like you got back from 100% physically at all last season? Uh, as far as the ankle, I, I got to a point where I wasn't really feeling much in the ankle. But, but the rest of it, like you were just talking No, you, it's tough when you're at the end of the season. It's hard enough when you don't have an injury to feel as explosive and as strong as you did at the start of the season. I've, I've had a lot of years where I have felt like that. Really in 2020 and 2021, I finished the season feeling great. 2022 was a different story. Uh, but, you know, this year I'm hoping, obviously, no injuries and feeling strong and explosive by the end. Harrison, I mean, obviously... <coughs> placement on kickoffs has always mattered, but with the new rule changes, is there going to be a different approach that you're going to have and different strategy that, you know, where you put the ball? Um, I think so. If, if you're going into a game and you want to be able to get them inside the 25 and they start fair catching, well, you got to look into potentially doing a squib kick to get them to to, to deter them from doing the fair catch. Obviously, if it's a squib kick, it's on the ground, you can't fair catch it. And then we'll see if we can get them down inside the 25, inside the 20. But I don't know if that scenario will arise. I don't know how many special teams coaches are going to want to do the fair catches. I think a lot of the coaches and players are going to want to return uh, these kickoffs. But we'll see. The squib kicks are something we're going to really start getting into and, and practicing. Because if you do get to that scenario where a team's fair catching and you want to try to make a play, you got to be able to hit a nice swip kick, you know, by the, the sideline and deep. And hopefully you can, you know, get some good, I don't know the term, like effective hang time on it. So by the time they do get the ball, hopefully it's a four or five second effective hang time.
Harrison, at, at what point in your uh, in your pro career did you realize? Because you talked, we we saw that the diet and, and things that you adjusted the biomechanics you talked about. Right. At what point in your career did you realize that this takes way more than just going out and just kicking every day? Probably that last off season is really when I focused on some new ways to get more power on the ball. As far as the diet, that was probably 2019, 2020, because I, I know how competitive competitive it is how many guys are trying to be NFL kickers and for me to be successful in this league for a long time I need to make sure I'm optimizing what God's given me and so you look at sleep you look at diet you look at hydration all those things and whatever you can find to give you an edge you definitely need but there's some guys you know they can eat whatever and not get sleep and they can still go out and ball but I just want to make sure I've I've dotted all my I's and crossed all my T's and I'm at my very best when I come to the field. Just a couple more. Did you kick with any local kids this summer I didn't. You know, normally Charlie Weinrich's the, the kicker I kick with, but uh, you know, he's at KU now and doing a lot a lot of off season weightlifting and kicking there. So I was kicking, actually I was kicking with a, a great little kicker, my son, you know, he's four years old. He uh, has his, his tights on, they're, they're, you know, tights that I wear under my football pants, but his will have an, an imprint of the football pan and the stripes, and you know, he'll try to wear a Chiefs hat out there. I have a couple extra helmets he'll put on, but it was actually a lot of fun uh, to be able to go out and kick with him, and, and he loves it, and we'd be out there two, three hours in the heat, he's running with me, I'm like, man, we can, we can go home, we can go get in the car, and, and he just loves being out there and kicking with his dad. Nick, and then back up here. <coughs> Excuse me. I felt like it went by so fast. I know you're playing all the way into mid-February with the Super Bowl, but you know, with with OTAs, with you know, we had our third third child. There's just a lot of stuff going on. It was very very busy, but you know, that's just kind of how it is. And and I love it. The older I get, the more stuff I have going on, and so time's just going by by very fast. But I am glad to be here at training camp. I have so many memories here. This is my seventh season, sixth time coming up to St. Joe for training camp. And it's a blessing and it feels like we just finished the season, but you know, maybe that keeps us in the rhythm and we're just ready to go. Going back to your time off, any concerns at, at all uh, about taking a while to find your touch again or get back into a rhythm? Or? Yeah, you know, that's a good question. Cause like I mentioned in past off seasons, I didn't take as much time off. So you finish the season, Last off season, I took you know a couple of days off. In the past, sometimes I take a week, two weeks. This I, this off season, I took a whole month off, and even then, it was just a really, really slow ramp up. <clears throat> and I think when you do that, it's harder to get back in your rhythm, get back in your groove. So you know those early kicking sessions were not the prettiest, but you know you got to be smart with it, and the, you got to think about the upcoming season, how long that season is, and doing everything to prepare for that. So if you're not kicking great in you know April. It's okay. You can slowly ramp it up and get ready so that you're at your best for when the season arrives. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thank Harrison. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, man.